And that rhymes with C and that stands for corn. Corn! Woo! Corn! It's corn day on Sing for Your Supper. Thank you, Robert Preston. That's a pretty complicated little opening there. Woo! You know, some me, choreography. Me and choreography. <laughs> I'm gonna put the P away. Put the P away. Because we need C for that, corn. Yeah. It also rhymes with T for trouble, but we're gonna stick with corn. We're gonna stick with corn. I'll take my corn. We're back. featuring corn! It's corn oh, day. It's happy corn day. It's starting to be it's starting to get to be corn season. It is. It? You know, because you get oh, it every once in a while. I love me some corn on we the cob. We love me some corn on the cob. Well we're gonna take it off the cob. Okay. Yeah, because you know me and my dessert I have to have oh, my dessert. Oh, that's right! I can't wait to see what you're gonna We're, do. I'm making corn ice cream. Corn ice cream today. Yeah. Brenna just made a face. Yeah, she's not bought into my corn ice cream yet, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to make a corn pudding, which is not a dessert; it's a savory side dish. Ooh, that sounds good. To go I with your am side making. Dish. We're having a lot of sides today. It's a side. That's day. okay. Because corn is a side dish. You know, it's getting to that time of year when people grill, and mm -hmm. so you've you've got a burger yep. or, or brats, and you need your side dishes. Mm -hmm. So think of these as your um, grilling sides. Perfect. I'm going to make polenta. Polenta. Which is a corn based. Uh, you can eat it soft. You can make it um, refrigerated and then turn it into little polenta cakes, mm. which I'm going to top with a bacon tomato jam. Savory cakes, right? Yes, not, savory. Not a yes, dessert you've cake. got the sweet. Got I've the got sweet. the savory. And I and we're going to discuss the musical. The Music the Man. The Music Man. A great show. I think it's a perfect show. It is a perfect show, but there is a line from another musical that would have fit perfectly. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye. We did that one. Yeah, and that's the only reference to corn in that whole show. So. It is. And they and grow a lot of corn in yeah, Iowa. They do. And that's yeah. in Oklahoma, in case you didn't know. Yes. All right, we're going to dive right in. Uh, I want to show you a new tool that I have. Oh, where did you uh, get this tool? Uh, this is a Pampered Chef tool. What? Uh, yes, and you can see the Pampered Chef right there on the floor. It is. This is called a kernel cutter. You know, yes, sir. Yeah, so, <laughs> what, did, what did you say when we were talking about this? Is a kernel cutter and the something from, oh, never mind, from Clue? Oh, I um, said Colonel Cutter in the kitchen with a knife. Yes, yes. Get it? it. Ah. That is a musical, too. So we're going to strip the corn off the... This is a yep. G-rated show. And Let's look, not use words like strip. And look how easy it's that happens. It just mm, goes right off there. That is easy. Yep. And, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, you got to take the corn off it. You can do this for salsa. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a lot of it when you want to take this off. What a handy little tool. Yep. I really love it. And I'm not being too specific with it because um, we're going to put this in a little food processor and we're just going to process it all up. Oh, we're not going to make these into you know anything more than that. And you know, corn with ice cream makes sense because sweet corn, it is sweet. Yeah, yeah it is. I'm anxious to try it. I've always heard about corn. Corn ice cream? Mm -hmm. You're kidding. I've never heard of it before. Oh, you know, I'm a fan of the Top Chef. Oh yes, and you and your top chef. And they have made that. There are always a few people who make corn ice cream, and it is usually a big hit. Well, we'll see if it is today. Okay. Well, let me let me hit you with some facts. Okay, you while it. you're stripping, stripping that my corn. corn. The writer. This person wrote the book, the music, and the lyrics. Oh, so it's Stondheim. It sounds like a Stondheim. Meredith Wilson. Meredith. And this musical. And Meredith is a lovely lady from Iowa. <laughs> Lovely gentleman. Oh, I'm gentleman. From Iowa. Okay, while you're doing that, so years and years ago, they did the music band at Starlight Theater. Uh huh. And uh, the next week, there was a letter in the Kansas City Star about someone who had seen the show, loved the show, encouraged everyone to go out and see Burgess Meredith's <laughs> oh music band. And I could never decide if the star just didn't want to change it. Or was having fun at that person's expense, but Burgess Meredith, who played you know the penguin on yes. Batman and, and in Rocky the coach, he did not write Music Man. No. Meredith Wilson wrote it. Nor was he in it. Nor was he in it. It opened in 1957. It ran for 1,375 performances, five Tonys, including Best Musical, Best Actor Robert Preston, who we heard on our intro, who's fantastic. Yes. Um, David Burns, who played Mayor Shin, won Featured Actor. What a great role. This surprised me. Guess who in that show won Featured Actress? Uh, Amaryllis? Barbara Cook. 
the star. Featured actress? Yes. Something was amiss. She was Marion, and she won Featured Actress. So that was bizarre to me. Will they put something Foster up for that this year? Yeah. I think she'll be Best a Featured Actress. Yeah, Best Featured Actress. Feature it did not win. Oh, it did win Best Musical. Guess what it beat? Speaking of Stephen Sondheim. Uh, uh, oh, I know West Side Story. It beat West Side Story. I, you know, it's one. Of, it's a tough. I, that's when the years it was like there were a lot of good choices. Yeah. So, Are you gonna let her rip over I'm, there? <laughs> no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use the food processor. Okay. <laughs> Is that why you're standing far away from me? Let me step over <laughs> here by the onions. Yeah. So we're gonna run this through the food processor real, real quick. All the corn that we have removed from our cob. Just give it a quick. Yep, there it is. So now it kind of looks like cream style corn. Mm -hmm. All right. Food. And we're going to make the base for our ice cream. Ooh, this is going to have good stuff in it. Oh, yes. This is very low cal. <laughs> Cup of whole milk. He lies. Don't, don't use skim milk. You got to use milk. fully loaded because we're going to put in two cups of heavy cream. Lord have mercy. I know. But you're not going to eat it all in one sitting. But that's not enough. We need more stuff. <laughs> We're going to put some sugar. This is three-fourths of a cup. We're only going to put half in right oh, now. Oh, okay. Just half. All right. And then we're going to put our corn mm. in. You your spatula? I do, please. If you wouldn't mind. Nope. Here you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It goes right in. Corn ice, corn ice cream. In the comments below, let us know if you've ever had corn ice cream and if you're a fan. I, I kind of want to do or, a... Or if you'd like some delivered to your house. Barb will be happy to bring Kevin some by. Kevin would be <laughs> door dashing right yes. over. <laughs> All right, that goes in there. So far, everything you've put in that saucepan, I am a fan of. Good. No carrots, huh? No, no carrots. carrots. All right, so we're going to let that steep. And what does steep mean, Barb, you know? Well, I know you steep tea, which usually uh -huh. means you've got the, your uh, wet ingredients to a certain temperature mm -hmm. and you're going to let it set and kind mm -hmm. of pull out the yeah. taste. The exact um, Wikipedia definition says that we want to bring it to 83 degrees and it's steeped at 83 degrees. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're just going to heat it to 83 mm -hmm. and then it has yes. steeped. It has steeped. You don't let it point. sit because like well, a tea bag. that's the next part. <laughs> So we're going to bring it to 83 degrees and we're going to let it sit for half an hour. But through the magic of television, we're going to make it work. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring out all of the corn flavor from the corn. Mm -hmm. And there's another way that we can bring out the corn flavor as well. Do you have any idea how we can do that? We can add corn kernels. We just did that. <laughs> well, you mushed them all up. I meant like whole... Oh, no. No? no. Uh, I don't know. We could use the corn cobs. We're going to put the corn cobs right into oh the Oh my cream. goodness. Yeah, I love I see that. see there's a lot of milk left there's in There's a lot. So we're going to put them right in there. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. And see the ice cream, you just yes. serve it with the it's corn like cobs. It's like making stuff. Yeah, you just kind of have some way to Putting present it. Put your bones it. in. All right. So I'm going to put that on the up, on the uh, stove here to steep while you move on. Okay. I have started a pot of water uh, trying to close to boil. Um, I am making polenta. Polenta is so easy to make. It's cornmeal and water. Now, there are a lot of people out there who have a lot of opinions about polenta. You make it with <laughs> stock. You make it with milk. After doing some reading and research, people, the purists say water and cornmeal. So here we go. The ratio is, this is one cup of cornmeal and it's the kind of medium coarse. You can see I'll just, it's not real fine. Um, four, it's a four or five to one ratio. So one cup of the cornmeal, you're gonna put four to five cups of water in. You can thin it down as it's cooking. If you like it thinner, of course, five cups of water. If you like it a little thicker, and mine's gonna be thick because I'm gonna wanna set it and turn it into polenta cakes. So the other trick, not trick, but what you wanna do is as your water is getting hot and getting close to a boil, you want to slowly pour it in and keep whisking. Because what do we not want? Lumpy Lumps. polenta makes us sad. So I am going to slowly add this. And I've put in four cups of water. And I'm just going to keep whisking so that we aren't lumpy. I want smooth, creamy polenta, just like your ice cream. I'm testing my temperature. We're at 68 right now. Mm, okay. 
69. Oh, we're going up. It's getting hot in here, baby. You know, Kevin, speaking of the music band, yes. there's a revival on Broadway right now. There is. Yes. With some hacks playing the weeds. Yeah, I think so. And that the tickets are very inexpensive. So if you <laughs> find yourself in New York, just run over to the box office. Well, first go to the bank and take out a small yeah. loan. Yeah, I think like six hundred dollars, something Seven, like that. Seven. When I looked, it was seven hundred dollars for just a ticket. One ticket to see a show that we all know and love. Which you know, I get it's Hugh Jackman and stuff. I mean, it's got a phenomenal cast. And let me give a shout out to Kansas City local Ryan Worsing, who is the dance captain, a swing for many roles, and in the ensemble. Uh, it probably be worth seven hundred dollars to see Ryan in that show. Way to go. Will he be cooking with us anytime soon? I wish. He, I don't think he's much of a cook. I'm sure on one of his off days. Yes. I know what. Let's take our show on the road, go to New York, see the show, and film an episode with Ronnie. Yes. Yeah. And maybe we can see the two. We didn't say who the two leads were. Oh, I think I said Hugh Jackman oh, yeah. and Sutton oh, Foster. Sorry. Yes. It's also got uh, over Jefferson here. Mays, um, uh, Shiler. Hemsley. Hemsley. Okay, I'm at 85, so oh, I'm just going to turn it off. I want to show you, um, this is all in here now. I don't know if you want to come back around, Brenna. Just how quickly it thickens up. So, look at that. It's, isn't that beautiful? Now, again, there's a lot of opinions about polenta. Some people say, cook it for four or five minutes, you're done. I did some research. And if you really want robust corn, you want the cornmeal to fully cook and be open and, and really have a good flavored polenta, you want to cook it 30 to 45 minutes. And once it's up there, you want to just reduce your heat and give it a stir every, I would say three or four minutes. It'll bubble a little bit. But now that we're kind of set, I'm going to turn that heat down and I'm going to keep checking in and giving it a nice stir with the whisk. But it's, there's no lumps, and we're just gonna let it keep cooking, and that's, that's it. Polenta is easy, and if you like corn, it's delicious. Wonderful. So we're gonna move back to uh, our ice cream. And so, uh, through the magic of television, we've let this steep for 30 minutes, uh, and we're going to do the next step in the ice that cream. Fast. I know, very fast. So we're gonna take five egg yolks. Look, look, look that. Look that. This cuts through the sugar and the cream. And we're gonna stir those up. And we're gonna add the rest of our sugar. May I? Yes, please. Look at that. What, what a team. Teamwork. What a team. Keep going. I'm Keep back going. on my polenta. I don't want it to get lumpy. <laughs> Keep going. Woo! All in there. All right. Is this going in there? It is gonna go in there. I'm we're gonna get... cover up that bad <laughs> word at the top. <laughs> As far as you know, it's real. It is real. It costs us six hundred dollars. Oh, it's brand new. It's brand new. Six hundred dollars for that. I've been having trouble today. <laughs> okay. Okay, that'll go in the blue Goodness corner. Goodness me. Did you get it? No. Here. I've been working out. I don't understand. Here, we'll use this. I had Kevin open something earlier too, but he did Here. struggle. Oh. It's All right. That's some clear. Okay, this is ridiculous. It should be easier than this. It's all right. Look just at this. This whole thing that says lift is going to come off, and the top's not going to come off. Just, just leave it. We can return it to the store. Oh, you should because. Yeah. No, I bought it at the dollar store too. Okay, that's going. All bye -bye. right. That's going bye bye. So now we're going to temper our eggs. What does that mean? We've discussed that before. Yes. I'm gonna go stir my polenta. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of the, we're gonna pour a little bit of the, the, the milk mixture into the eggs. I'm gonna move the spoon because I don't need it. You know, while you do that, uh -huh. all I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna fill you in later, I'm gonna start right. rendering some Ooh. bacon. And what that means is just cooking it and getting it crisp. So that's going in a skillet that I have preheated. It's, um, 12 ounces of bacon that's been cut up into pieces. There you go. All right, you well, render. Kevin's tempering. I'm going to temper and render. Yes. 
So good we've, words. we've tempered our eggs, and now we're gonna put the eggs back into the hot milk mixture. Because if we and don't- why did you do that, I was Kevin? just gonna ask you what we would get if I hadn't done that. We get some- Brenna? S scrambled eggs. Scrambled, scrambled eggs. eggs. Brenna, Brenna wants scrambled Brenna eggs. Brenna has learned cream. something in her time with us. <laughs> All right. What did you notice, Barb, that wasn't in here that was in here before? Corn. Yes, the corn okay. cobs are we're taken out. Now we're going to oh, put them, gonna, we're gonna put know, them back in. You know it if you put a scoop of the ice cream on the cob. Uh-huh. And licked it right off of that, wouldn't it? You could. Well, kind of fun. we might try that later. I kind of like that. Somebody, okay. someone that's not here in front of the camera is shaking their head at that idea. But I say maybe we need to give it a whirl. All right, so that would go back for another 30 minutes or so. But we're going to skip that step and move right on to the next step. So we're gonna pretend like that's been on the- Are you done with your burner? I'm done with that burner, yes. Okay. We're gonna pretend like that we're done with that step and I'm going to get like on. What do you need? Strainer. I'm just gonna strain all that corn out, remember, that we had. Can so, I eat it? <laughs> you can if you want to. Because it's been soaking in cream and yep. butter and sugar and it sounds fabulous to me. So we're gonna take our corn cobs out. Okay. But we're still not done with the corn cobs, so do not throw these corn oh, cobs away. never. I'm going to make... Before those get thrown away, I'm going to nibble on them. I'm going to... Mark well, my no, words. No, you can't eat them because I'm going to use a, make a craft project out of them for the fall. <laughs> I still might nibble on them. <laughs> All right, so we're going to strain. A little liquid. And press down a little bit on it. Make sure we get all the milk out of that corn. How's things going over in I am polenta land? Continuing to stir and everything looks beautiful. And my bacon is starting to sizzle. Are you rendering still? I'm still rendering. Okay. And I'm going to throw in... I'm gonna is, put a little, is that that Christmas song, I render as I render? render. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little salt in my pulling. A little salt, a little salt. salt. All right, look how much corn. See, that's how much corn we've got. I bet you could make something out of that, but we're not today. I, I, you know what? I'm just gonna try it. Okay. I bet it's delicious. I bet it is. Oh my god. Here. It's so sweet. Mm. I'll scrape it off right here. No, I need a new spoon. Don't judge me. It's so good. I love corn. Okay. What I hate in carrots, I make up for in corn. Mmm, 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 mmm. That is fantastic. All right, got one more to go. One more what? Step? One, no, one more. Oh, strain. Strain. Okay. We want all of that. We're rendering and straining today, folks. Straining, rendering, steeping, straining. <laughs> We're taking the SAT of cooking. It's like, it's like we have 76 different ways of cooking today. Oh, nicely done. Let's get back to the chef. Oh, nice segue. <laughs> way to go. I thought this was interesting. It was the first cast album to win a Grammy oh. for Best Musical Theater Album. And it spent, just take a guess, how many weeks it's been on the Billboard chart? I have no idea. 245 weeks. Wow. Yeah. That's the original recording. That's the original past recording. I don't know two weeks that. in a year, you do the math. Uh, very popular, wildly popular. Um, I thought this was some Robert Preston didn't consider himself a singer, although he does a pretty good job in the movie, yeah. and until there was you. Um, but the producers had the actors to audition with the song Trouble, the patter song. Uh -huh. And of course he rocked that because he was a, a well-trained actor and he was great with his diction and all of that and he got the part and the rest is history because he's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Now, it's interesting that he played the role in the movie, but um, Barbara Cook did not. Is did there not. some story behind that? I didn't, I didn't see hmm. any story uh, about that except maybe she just didn't have a big enough name. Yeah. And so they went with Shirley Jones who of course, you know, kind of break oh, out yeah. and... 
Well, she just done Oklahoma. Too, right. So, right. Yeah. So I could see that, and she was good. Yeah. It would be interesting to see the trajectory if Barbara Cook had gotten that role. Yeah. She could have been the mother of the Parker's family. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Love that. Just don't see Love that, that. But it's something to think about. All right, so our ice cream now goes into the refrigerator and sits overnight to get cold. Okay. And guess what happens to these? I'm going to nibble on them. No, nope, they go right back in. Darn it, another opportunity lost. Yeah, so we're going to, we'll probably we get... put all this in there too? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we'll probably get some corn, a little bit of corn kernels after this sits all night, which yeah. is okay because you want a little bit of it in your corn. So I'm going to put this over here right now. Things are being rendered over here. And get ready for my corn pudding. Are you ready for the corn pudding or do you have something else to do? Oh no, I'm still rendering. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll tell you what, <laughs> let me give a quick overview of the bacon is part of my bacon tomato jam, which is going to go on top of my rolled polenta cakes. And both of these are so easy to make. As you saw, the polenta, you put the cornmeal in, whisk it, let it cook. That's it, it's done. You can let it set or you can serve it softer. You could serve it um, with a tomato sauce. Uh, you could serve it with like a ragu tomato sauce. It's, you know, kind of an Italian thing. You can do what I'm doing, which is make it into polenta cakes, which make a great little side dish for things. You could even cut these smaller and have little appetizers. But what I'm making is the bacon tomato jam that's going to go on top of it. So you start with the bacon, and we're gonna also put in an onion that's chopped and four cloves of garlic. And then we're gonna put in, uh, we're gonna let all that cook for a while until it cooks down. Then we're adding 20 ounces of smaller tomatoes. I went ahead and cut in half, and I got the different colored ones. Oh, those are beautiful. Heirloom tomatoes. Yeah, Lovely. those are gorgeous. It's yes. just gonna make it look prettier. Then we're also gonna add brown sugar, cider vinegar and a little salt and pepper and you just cook that down once it's all together and you kind of mash your tomatoes like potato masher you're going to use uh for about 45 minutes until it cooks down and you're going to end up with this phenomenal tomato bacon jam so i'm going to put the onions and my garlic in with my bacon okay and then kevin's going to talk about his corn pudding all right this could not be an easy recipe it's so basic and so easy. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna take the can opener and open this can of cream style corn. Where'd you get that can opener? <laughs> Are we pushing fabric shelves today? Know, just... Barb's our newest consultant, so if you'd like to book a party, call Barb. That's right. She's been aching to do it for years and years and years, and now she has some free time on her hands. Oh, yeah. All right, so open, all right, it's open. I do love this can opener though. Because it cuts the top off the can and doesn't My leave any mom had that can open. no sharp we edges. Love yeah. We love that. Really? All right. So now it's just a matter of combining all of our goodness here. Uh, we've got a cup of. I found out today. I asked Alexa. I mean, I always forget that you can just ask Alexa anything. I said, "How many ounces are in a cup?" And there's eight ounces eight? in a cup. So. And how many ounces are in a pound? Oh, I don't have any idea. Pints a pound, the world around, 16. So 16 ounces in a pint, 16 ounces in a pound. All right. It's a little saying for you. All right, so we're gonna put in one uh, package, it's 8.5 ounces of Jiffy Corn Mix. This is our corn pudding. It's a savory corn pudding. I should open this up too, but here we go. Lots of opening in this recipe. But that's all you have to do. There's no cooking really involved, except putting it in the oven. All right, so we're gonna put in that whole package. I'm going to put in a one can of cream style corn, one can of corn, um, whole corn, whole kernel, kernel corn, yes, kernel corn. with it's been drained though. in the kitchen. It's been drained. We're going to put in two eggs. Save your cans. You can put the shells in the, in the cans. We're going to put in one cup, which is eight ounces of cream cheese, of not cream cheese, of sour cream, sorry. And then we're going to mix that all together. I'm going to get one of my bigger spoons. I'll make it a little bit easier. What do you like to 
What kind of meal do you like to have when you have cornbread? Oh, barbecue. Chili. 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 I mean, so many good things. I'm, I, can, I can make a meal out of cornbread. Yeah. My mother would have pinto beans, but that's not one of my favorite things. But With cornbread? Yeah, oh, yeah. She loves that. Yeah, my mom would make beans and ham. Yep. And cornbread. Yep. That looks so good. Speaking of Pampered Chef, we now have a pan that puts the little um, holes in your cornbread, so you can you get you make it, and then it's got holes in it, and then you can put the chili right in the cornbread. Doesn't that sound mm. good? Brenda's giving me a weird look on that, but it's very very good. I didn't know that was a thing. It's a thing now. Okay, it is a thing. I was thinking it would have like divots in it so you could put butter and honey or something. Oh, you could do that too. That sounds really good. It's part of our surprise pan package. Ooh. Yeah. And then you can, nice. the other part of the pan is solid and you put that on top. Not when you're making chili, but you can put ingredients in your like uh, puddings or something in your cake. And then you just frost it. You make, mm. put, make the cake separately and then put it together like that. All right. Mm. Call bar for more information. She's now represented. Okay. Again. Yeah. All right. We're going to add one cup of pepper jack cheese. That Ooh, I have it's going to be a little kick. Slaved over to. It's hard to get things open today. It is. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. I still can't All get right. that. Ooh, there you go. And I've got two jalapenos here for a little oh, kick. Oh, no. Because Barb, Barb loves those jalapenos. Next thing you're going to throw some carrots in there. And a couple of carrots. No. <laughs> but see, that makes a nice color. Gives it a little color. You could do a, a not as hot a chili, right? You could do like oh, a... Yeah. Um, but if you take the seeds out, it's not so hot. Mm -hmm. Remember we found that out a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll be the judge of that. Mm -hmm. I'll be the judge of that. That's I'll what RuPaul always it. says. I'll be the judge, I'll be of, the that. judge of that. All right, and that's all it is. And I'm going to put it into an 8x8 eight eight pan. Mm. That little green does look nice. See? And that bacon or pancetta, whatever you're rendering over there, smelling quite oh, nice yeah. as well. I say, we're starting to uh, render and get a little crispy. Um, and so, once you put all that in, I will see what I'm going to do next. All right, this goes into a 350 degree oven for 40 to 50 minutes. Those are gonna be thick. Mm -hmm. Could you could you make it in a bigger pan and then you could. maybe you wouldn't cook it you as could. well? But I like it thick because this way you can scoop it out with an ice cream scoop if you want to. If you were using an ice cream scoop for something else yes. in your menu. Yes, it's a corn and there it scoopy is. kind of day. We'll show you what it looks like after we finish cooking it in just a few minutes. But on to the rendering. Okay, so my bacon is getting rendered and it's just starting to crisp up, which is good. And the onions are translucent, it looks so pretty. So now what I'm gonna do is add my beautiful tomatoes that I cut in half. I'm going to add half a cup of brown sugar. I'm sorry, a fourth a cup of brown sugar. Recipes will be below. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Well, that's the first time we said that in this episode. Oh, I know you missed it. And this, you're just gonna keep an eye on it and um, medium heat and it just has to cook for about 45 minutes and so i would say turn your heat down and every 10 minutes check on it give it a stir and um, after maybe 20 minutes you want to get a potato masher and start breaking down your tomatoes but you let them cook first so they start to soften up that's it that is how you make tomato bacon jam it's so easy and it's so delicious. And if you can see the polenta back here is still bubbling. And you would give it probably another 20 minutes. But once, it's really not gonna change, it's just allowing it to keep cooking. So when that is finished, you're gonna get a pie pan, put a little spray in the bottom, pour your polenta into it, and then let it refrigerate. 
And as you can see, I already cut a few out to test it. But this is my polenta, it's nice and firm, okay? And so I have a little skillet over here heating up and we are gonna make little polenta cakes. Just a cookie cutter. Cut out a couple. Oh, that's beautiful. That nice, look at that. Get this going. And like I said, if you wanted to do more of an appetizer, you could get something smaller or cut squares um, and have them on a little plate and then top them with just a bit of that tomato jam. Okay, we're gonna, there's three of us. So guess what, we're doing three cakes today. So I'm gonna come over here to the skillet. I'm gonna add a touch of oil. I'm not sure I need it with the skillet. But this is already getting hot. And I'm gonna just give it, ooh, look at that sizzle. A couple of minutes on each side. Okay. Okay. Oh, here. You know what? I'm gonna use your pastry. I'm gonna cut up these tomatoes. So after a while, you're gonna start <laughs> now, mushing up your tomatoes and breaking them down. And like I said, about every ten minutes, you want to check on this. And so every ten minutes or so, just give it another little mash. There we go. I'm going to let that bubble for a while. Because you also want, you want it to reduce down, and so you want the liquid to keep reducing. So if you cover it, that's not going to happen. So you want to let that dissipate and uh, cook down over the 45 minutes. Looks like bruschetta. Yes, it does. You're going to be surprised when you come back over here, Barb. I've been very busy. Are things today. happening? I've been very busy while you've been gone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have completed ice cream and completed oh corn pudding. How about that? You want to try some? Yes. So I'm going to have, I'll have to put my little uh, polenta cakes in just a moment. So we'll try yours. We'll do a little bit of the corn pudding first. Mm. I'm just going to use my scoop. Scoop it out. It's the way they serve it in North Carolina. Is it? Yep. We need another four. We have four slots. <laughs> we have a few. And we need spoons for ice cream. On yes, we will. There we go. Okay. Hope you like it. Oh. <laughs> I like that a lot. Mmm. Mmm. You get the corn kernels. Mm-hmm. And you get that little spice from the jalapeno. It's not. No, I got just got a little kick. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. I I can live with that. Ooh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Creamy. Mm. So our cream helps it quite a bit. That <laughs> helps everything. Mm -hmm. There's a little corn in there. Mm. And the, the creaminess of the cream top corn really goes away because it soaks up into the mm -hmm. you know, cornbread. Nice. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Very nice. Delicious. That'd be great with a barbecue. Mm-hmm. Great with chili. I eat it with ribs in North Carolina. Oh. I'm not just yeah. about anything with ribs. Well, that's true. Nice. And here's our ice cream. That's been in the uh, refrigerator, in the freezer for overnight. So, so you just put it in the freezer. You didn't churn it. Well, I churned it first. Oh, you did churn it. Oh, uh, in my okay. electric freezer, and that gets it pretty much to good consistency. And then put it into the freezer to get hard, which it has <laughs> very successfully Are you gotten hard. Having a hard time. Well, something? it's not the easiest thing in the world, but I'm gonna put some hot water on it and make that work. Mm. Ooh, I can't wait to try this. I'm gonna get out of the way though in case things start flying. Nothing's gonna fly. Okay. I'm gonna give you a little bit more. While you're doing that, I was gonna talk about there was another revival. Um, I know I saw the revival too. Did you see the 2001? Directed yeah. and choreographed by Susan Stroman. Yes. Uh, starring Craig Tierco. Yes. Who I just heard raves about. I've seen him. He on was TV. He sounded just like Robert Frost. I always like him. I haven't yeah. seen him do much lately, no, but he's he funny, been. he's handsome, he's talented, and the, the beloved 
Rebecca Luker. Yes. May she rest in peace. Yes. And do you know who replaced Crip Yerko? Hmm. Yes. Uh, I don't. I don't know. A man. <laughs> okay. That narrows it down. To 49% uh, of the population. Sitcom fame. Craig Beer. No, that's him. Uh, <laughs> sitcom fame. Mm -hmm. Give me another hint. Somebody and Grace. Oh, Eric McCormick. That's Eric right. McCormick. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. He's good. He can do a lot. <gasps> Look, that is the color. There's no added color to that. That is, that's like, it looks like you're eating butter. Now what I would do, and I forgot to do it because we had, well, you can't want to. Oh, I would serve this with the husk of the corn and oh. put it on top of the husk of the corn so you get the green of the. I still want to make a scoop out of that. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm going to use this. I'm going to make us, I'm going to get our polenta cakes. Okay. Oh, we're not going to taste ice cream? Well, give me one second. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's, t let's taste that ice cream. I'm going to let this cook one more minute. Can't wait to see what you think. Mmm. <laughs> Isn't that good? It's not a strong corn flavor. You don't? Yeah, I was just going to say. You're aware it's there. It's it's like a really great French vanilla mm -hmm. ice cream with a hint of corn. Mm -hmm. Just a hint of corn. Oh mm -hmm. man, that's so good. Creamy. Mmm. Put some of this over it. Mm-hmm. Hit me, baby. <clears throat> to quote Bet Benatar, hit me with your best shot. Yeah, this is one of Ina's tips. Okay, Not about this ice cream, but she always tries to put something on her dish so you know what it is. So Put some corn on it. Mm. Okay, we're mm -hmm. going to share a plate here. Oh, wonderful. Um, I just, um, we're getting ready to wrap things up. But I want to quickly show you. Here's the jam as it continues to cook. Look at that. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And it smells fantastic. Mm -hmm. It does. You're going to just keep letting it cook and reduce, smash those tomatoes, and eventually you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Now, All that comes to this? Well, I had a big container. I scooped okay. this out and heated right. it up. Now, I didn't use the colorful. I just used the red tomatoes. Right. So, but we'll get a nice color from that last one. Beautiful. Look at this. We're going to top our little polenta oh cakes with our bacon tomato jam. Mm, we're not going to be stingy either. No. Because this stuff is so good. Okay, we're going to share a plate. All right. You got to use that spoon. This going to be my spoon. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to lose that. Think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we talked about not having a protein in this meal. Bacon. You don't need it. I'll tell you what, yeah. I had one of these for lunch to test it out. Mm -hmm. I was full. Yeah, that and a little side salad. Mm -hmm. All you need. A little salad. This would make a great little meal. Or a side dish with, mm -hmm. I guess it's some chicken. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. This or some. Corn ice cream. Corn ice cream. <laughs> and like I said, if you if you had a smaller cutter and you just you could mm -hmm. have these as a little appetizer. appetizer. Absolutely. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Mm. Have we blend everything we can from corn and the show? Or is there something else we need to blend? I think we've done it all, baby. Good night, my someone. Good it's night. Time to say good night, mm -hmm. my someone. Yeah. We hope you try some night. of these. I hope. You realize th these are all pretty simple. Spend my polenta and this jam. This is so easy. You just throw it all together. Give it a try. You yeah. will not be disappointed. And, you know, put in the music man. Yeah. And watch that. It's a great show. 76 trombones all the way. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye.